Hey guys, here we one here. Welcome back to another video. And today I got my friends Lionel 6-28235. This is the Great Northern Alco U33C and it's got some issues with the motor and the rear coupler and some cosmetic things that I'm going to be fixing today. All right, so let's start out by showing you guys what its current state is. Let's power it up here. Try and remember what the number is. Oh yeah, I forgot about that part. So this also has the same issue with the speaker that the uh, that Lackawanna Trainmaster had, where the speaker is super crackly, um, probably because something inside of it has failed. So that's going to need to be a part that I put on my order list. Uh, but the main thing here, so sorry, first another small thing. If I hit the rear coupler, makes the sound, nothing happens. If I hit the front coupler. It makes the sound of the front coupler opens. So that's all fine and dandy. Um, if I go to, to apply any amount of voltage to the motor, you'll notice the cab light dims, my CW80 starts flashing, and uh, yeah, so nothing is turning when I apply voltage. So this engine does have Odyssey, so what's probably happening is it's trying to turn the motors and the motor... Okay, I need to make this thing be quiet. Um, the, it's putting voltage to the motor and the motor is trying to make things turn and they're not turning. So it keeps putting more voltage to the motor in an attempt to um, make the motor turn and it keeps not turning because it's seized or something's jammed in it uh, or the motors have failed. Um, and that's why it immediately draws all the amps out of the, out of the transformer. So, if I turn off Odyssey Speed Control, which I have tested, it does the same thing. It's just it the cab light dims and it shorts as much as you turn up the throttle instead of it just going full, complete short uh, on speed step one. So, with that in mind, let's, uh, let's crack this engine open and take a look at what's inside. So that was fun. Um, taking it out is pretty simple. There's just four body screws. Uh, one of the body mounts actually snapped off. Actually, it looks like there's supposed to be six body screws. This post is snapped, and so is, yeah, so is that post. So, noted, okay. This engine's clearly been through the ringer. Holy cow. Um, also, when I took the chassis out, I pulled a decent amount of stuff with it. And that's a little concerning, but I guess now that it's here, uh, I'm going to dig into this a little bit and, uh, and see what I can find. All right, so I haven't gotten very far, but a couple things. Uh, first of all, I was going to blame whoever owned this before my friend on its terrible condition um, because he didn't actually uh, know he had this. He bought it at some point, forgot that he bought it, and we were inventorying all his locomotives and we found this. So I tested it out and, and discovered what you just saw. Uh, but I can't entirely blame the previous owner because I just went to go breathe on this thing to like look at the motor and it just catapulted itself off of the, the foam <laughs> cradle, which, okay, sure, I guess. So whatever. Thankfully, everything's still intact. But I want to go turn this motor, and this motor is tight, really tight. Um, the more I work it, the more it's breaking free, but, like, that's not correct. And I don't know if that's the motor or if that's the truck. Let me try the—I haven't tried the front one yet. Let's, let's do this together, see what we get. Yeah, same story. It's turning, but it doesn't want to. Oh, that's fun. Also, there's pieces just falling out of this thing. Um, this front plate is warped. The tab that holds in this light, which I think is for the one of the number boards, is snapped off. Uh, the, the insulation that they used between the frame and the shell for sound deadening or, or vibration cancellation or whatever 
uh, is literally disintegrating in my hands. So that's fun. Uh, but there's no battery in it, so that's a plus. Uh, but yeah, so let me try and separate one of these motors from the truck and see if I can take a look at if it's the motor or if there's something in the gears um, that's causing it to bind. So I think I accidentally stumbled into the problem. Um, in the attempt to take out the motor, I ended up just disassembling the entire truck um, because I was trying to figure out how to do it. And here there's just two screws up top. You rotate this top plate, it will show three screws. The middle one is your center pickup, which you have to unscrew. Um, and then there's two to either side of it, or one on either side of it. And once you unscrew that, you can pry up on the lower plate here, and it will pop the motor out of the truck frame. However, I was in here, and here's what the trucks look like. So they have, uh, or the, the axle set rather. So they have two bearings, obviously, um, per axle. This grease, first of all, is super sticky. Like, I'm sure it's lubed and, like, it'll spin, um, but it's rigid, or it's, uh, it's stiff. So, this side, on the other hand, uh, doesn't turn at all. So, I'm gonna take a guess and say that this is gonna be a common issue on these axles, and that's why this motor is not turning because it's trying to turn seized ac or seized bearings. So I'm going to try and break these free and see if I can recover them. If not, I'm going to need to try to buy new trucks, which I really don't want to do, but let me see if I can crack these loose first. All right, so I was able to walk this off, and what was left of the grease on this was basically it, it turned to adhesive. It was sticky as anything and it was thick so I took some time and I rubbed it off and now this bearing actually spins on the axle which is good it means I can put new uh, new oil on it and this axle at least should be good to go by the way the the motor spins with no issues at all it's totally fine so I'm gonna take a look at the other axles that I accidentally removed and uh, see if they have the same issue. And right off the bat, here's another one. It is rock solid. So I'm going to hold it with a set of pliers, wiggle the axle around, try and walk the bearing off of what's left of the factory grease. As you can see, that is disgusting. Um... If you guys have any ideas as to why that is, is that a thing that Grease does? Was somebody in here previously and just got it wrong? Uh, let me know in the comments, because if that's a common issue, um, I should probably be servicing these trucks more often to get that stuff out of here before it does that. So, But anyway, now that I got the bearing walked off, I'm just taking a paper towel and holding it over the axle and just rotating it until most, if not all, of that gunk comes off. And then now the, uh, now the bearing will be able to just slide right over and it spins pretty freely. So I'll put some oil on it and I'm just gonna go down all six axles on this engine and make sure that they all spin freely. All right, so here's how you officially remove the truck. Um, as I said, there are two screws up top that go into these two housings. You have to turn the truck to access it through um, the, the one opening that is available to you uh, in the frame. And then once those two are removed, there's a screw on the bottom right here in the middle that comes out and that's what goes into the actual motor itself. And then you have to unscrew the pickup rollers. Um, the rear pickup roller is accessible through that same window that you got the side two out. And then the front pickup roller uh, comes through this opening where the wires are 
on the front of the locomotive, there's this panel in the way. I just kind of pulled it out and it snapped. I don't know if it's supposed to have a retainer in it or not because this engine is disintegrating uh, as every minute passes. So anyway, same story over here. Uh, motor spins just fine. Wheels do not. So I'm going to take all this apart again and do a deep clean on it and see where we get. Well, that was one hell of a fight. So, uh, let's pray that that actually did something. Alright, is it gonna move? It's, it tried. Okay. Interesting. Okay, uh, let me take another look at another look at this and uh, see if I can figure out what's going on. Well, I turned the motor over a couple times by hand, and uh, they're moving now. So that's nice. The front motor does not want to keep up with the rear motor. Right now it's barely turning and the rear motor is, is moving at quite a decent clip. So I don't know I don't know why this one's being so weird. I don't know if it's got like extra resistance in it or something, but I don't know. Maybe it just needs to be run in. So I'm just gonna kinda crank it up and uh, let it sit here for a little bit and maybe wear itself in, maybe not, and uh, we'll see if we can start it back up from a standstill. Okay, so it's uh, it's been a second. Um, I had to disassemble and reassemble the rear truck twice between the last shot and now because it started binding on something, um, and I couldn't figure out what it was. So I took it apart, I found nothing, I put it back together, uh, and it was still binding on something. So I took it apart again, and I just spun up the motor without it being attached to the truck, and it ran just fine, so I put the whole thing back together, and now it runs okay, so... I don't know. But, um... Just to show you what we got so far, I'm gonna, uh... crank it up here. Set it to speed step one. You can see my rear motor is turning. Um, my front motor is trying and failing to turn. Um, but... As I speed it up, once I get to about like speed step six or seven, the front motor kicks up and it's caught up with the uh, with the rear truck. So I don't foresee that being too much of a problem considering the fact that the this engine will be moving together. So this end this this motor will help push the front motor. Um, but yeah, so currently. So that's forward operation, and it works just fine. If I flip it into reverse here, and I wind it up, and you can see we have reverse as well. So that's handy. Um, speaker still sounds like crap. It sounded, it sounded okay for a second, and then it went back to sounding like crap. So I think it sang its last hurrah. Um, I'll take apart the fuel tank just to make sure, uh, but that's a, uh, I can put the shell back on before I do that, which I need to do because the longer I look at the inside of this engine, th the more upset I get because this thing is not easy to work on. So we're just going to, uh, put everything back together the best that I can, close it up and hopefully never have to take that shell off again. Oh, the other thing. Speaking of never having to take a shell off again, somehow, couldn't tell you how, I just did a little bit of rewinding on the rear coupler, and now if I throw the rear coupler, it works. I have no idea why it works. I genuinely, like, I didn't expect what I did to work. I just kind of pulled the wires out, unwrapped all the old electrical tape. Uh, rewrapped the wire, the, the coil, 
and by rewrap I mean like I just kind of shoved the excess that came out like maybe a half inch of wire just back underneath of new electrical tape and I don't know it works now so I'll take it, it means I don't need to buy a new electrocoupler so as far as I can tell the only part that this needs is a speaker which is quite nice actually so let's get the shell back on this thing and uh, give it one last run and I'm gonna go order that uh, that speaker and I'll see you then all right so we're back with the u-boat uh, I got some parts from Lionel primarily the speaker here um, and then I need to remember to attach the cosmetic parts but I just want to see what its current state is because if I remember correctly when I put this back together after the end of the last shot or, or whenever that was and I went to go test run it it started doing the thing that it was doing originally um, where it starts shorting because of the motor load so let's uh, let's see what happens here I need to remember the engine number it's that one hmm yeah, that speaker is spicy. Oh. Hey, maybe it fixed itself. Oh, wouldn't that be nice? Let's see if I can get that front motor turning. Mm, doesn't like it. There it goes. You can see the cab light. Oh, there it went. Interesting. Okay. Uh, so why did it work and then it didn't? Can I at least get one again? Yeah, I can. So the second it starts applying any amount of, like, serious load to the front truck, it starts shorting. Oh, yeah. I was really hopeful for a second because it was working at first. Oh well. Alright, well. Looks like I'm taking the shell back off this thing. So the saga of this engine just continuously disintegrating uh, continues. So I took the shell off and the engineer just fell down. Um, and by the way, we're down to a single body screw that holds this on because this front one snapped and the two on the rear are snapped now. So, yippee. Uh, also, the motor spins super freely. Uh, so, I, I don't know why that would be binding. Maybe the engineer got stuck in it or something? I don't know. Uh, regardless, I'm going to throw this as is on the test stand and uh, see if I still have that binding issue. All right, let's see what we get here. All right. Rear motor spinning, no problem. Front motor spinning, no problem. What in the world? So yeah, maybe that, um... Maybe the engineer was getting stuck. Because it's running smooth now. Thank goodness. Um, yeah, let me fix that engineer. I'll make sure nothing else is getting in the way of the motor. Uh... Also, sorry, I keep saying engineer. It's not the engineer. It's actually the conductor, I want to say, because the engineer's on this side, and he's still there. Um, whatever. Uh, yeah, I'm going to make sure that nothing's actually rubbing on the motor when I put the shell back on, and hopefully I never have to take this off ever again. Um, although I should probably make sure that the speaker is in its own enclosure first before I commit to that. But regardless, let's put the shell back on. Okay, that took like 20 minutes. This engine's a piece of work, I'll tell you. Alright, please work. Alright, I got both motors turning.
So something up front is rubbing, but I can see the whole shell walking backwards. And if I hold the shell forward, it's fine. Okay. Let's hope that the screw, the singular body screw, has enough force without snapping that tab off to uh, to hold this body forward so it doesn't rub. Alright, single screw is back in. And... Well, whatever it is is still rubbing up front. That's annoying. Okay. What? So both trucks are turning, and then once you get to a certain speed step, it starts doing the thing again. This rear truck is a champ. It is butter smooth. This may be a, uh, a low-speed operation only engine. Or it could just be, you know, an Alco where you push it too hard and it just goes kaboom. It does that prototypically. Okay, well... I think I'm going to leave it there for right now. And I'm going to take the fuel tank off and try and swap out the speaker because that should be easy. I hope. So pretty simple. There's just four screws. Well, there, there would be. I'm missing one. I don't know why. Um, but they're right behind the front truck and the rear truck. Also, yes, it has magnetic wheels because it's magnet traction. Um, these two screws hold down the smoke unit, and I don't know, I think these were originally supposed to be body mounts, uh, and they're just not anymore since the engine has decided that it wanted to delete them from itself, but, yep. So anyway, there's the speaker. Um, it should be pretty simple to, to swap in. Got my replacement here. Uh, so let's go ahead and do that. Here's the speaker that's going in it, by the way. Um, 8 ohm, half watt, made in Taiwan, go figure. Uh, annoyingly, Lionel had heat shrinked the, the wires. So they already had wires on it, which is nice, but they were heat shrinked over the tabs and I'm trying to reuse the wires in the locomotive, which means that I had to slice open the heat shrink and then melt the solder and then pull it off. Uh, the inner solder joints here are the wires that go into the actual, the actual speaker itself. Um, so you don't really want to take those off because then, then your speaker don't work. But yeah, so I got that removed so I can put it in. Also, when I pulled out the old speaker here, uh, I got a really strong like burning smell, um, which I don't think is correct. Also, this center bit is pushed out way further. And I think there's a broken lead there. So that might have something to do with why this thing is sounding so bad. Um, but anyway, yeah, this one, this one, it smelled bad. It doesn't sound good. So I'm hoping that this is the issue. Because if this doesn't fix it, that means there's an issue with the board. Uh, either the rail sounds board or the power board. And I can probably try a replacement power board, but I definitely can't try a replacement rail sounds board because they don't make them anymore. So, yeah. Anyway, let's throw this in here and uh, 
Let's see what it sounds like. All right, speakers back in. Fuel tank's on. Let's see how it sounds. Oh yeah. That is good. That sounds real good. Um, I love I love it when it's that easy. Uh, anyway, I say that easy as I've been struggling for days with this engine. Um, last order of business is to get these couple detail parts back on, and then I can box this engine back up and hand it off to my friend. Okay, detail parts are back on. Also, the uh, the smoke fluid funnel is supposed to be removable. It's just a very loose fit. Um, because how are you supposed to get smoke fluid in through the grates? So that's fun. And the drop plate goes up and down, which is nice, uh, because that whole assembly had just been pulled out of the shell. So yippee. Um, but yeah, so that's fixed. Uh, couplers work and the motors work at least as well as I can make them. And I'm going to call it there for this engine because I'm done looking at it. Uh, this thing has been a nightmare. Um, I don't know what the backstory is on this thing. I don't know if this was like if I had tried selling the purple diesel that I have that I've worked on since I was a kid, which is missing so many pieces and it's in just really bad shape. But whatever the story is here, uh, holy cow, is it one that I would love to hear because not only is the engine just designed poorly, um, but somebody had clearly been through this thing several times. Uh, parts are broken off, things have disintegrated, things are missing, like, this engine has been through the ringer, but it's back in mostly functional again, uh, below a certain speed step, and I'm gonna go give it back to my friend, and he's going to run it on his layout that I'm actually designing, and, uh, I'm gonna be doing the benchwork plan soon for that, so that'll be fun, but yeah, I hope you all learned something from this. If you like second gen diesels, which I think this is, uh, go ahead, let me know in the comments. What do you, what do you think of this thing? Uh, I, I'm personally not a huge fan of U-boats. I'm more of a first-gen diesel kind of guy, so FM train masters, uh, RS3s, that kind of thing. Um, obviously, any F unit. So, if you like uh, if you like these this era of diesel, let me know why. I'm, I'm curious. Uh, also, let me know what you think of the repair, and you can feel free to yell at me that I did something wrong, because I'm sure I did, uh, seeing as the fact that it doesn't work fully. But, you know, I love hearing your guys' feedback. Um, I use it in all of the repairs that I do after these videos go up. So any feedback you guys have, I'm all ears, and I'll use it. So thank you so much for watching. I hope you all enjoyed. Uh, and yeah, I am CW Hollow one and have a good day, or maybe good night in your case. See ya.